there's a few boxes I'd like to check off today. First, everyone's been asking for a full range speaker project, so I'll show you what I've come up with complete with a demo. Second, for my 3D printing audience, I realize that many of you are working with a 200 by 200 millimeter build volume on the X and the Y, so we'll stay within those boundaries. And third, check it out. Longer 3D has sent in their LK4 printer for me to review, so we'll put that together and see how it does. Stick around. This really is an exciting time to be a maker, and the rate at which companies update their offerings is staggering. The features that only a year ago might have been exclusive to flagship 3D printers are now implemented in machines costing less than 200 bucks, like this one. And since even those features are improved upon with trial and feedback, by the time they trickle down to the affordable product range, oftentimes they work as well if not better than those of their costly predecessors. So you do get that color touch screen, that 24 volt operation with power loss recovery, 0.1 millimeter precision on the Z axis, a heated bed with a detachable plate, and a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. As you can see, the printer comes as a kit and it takes about an hour to assemble. There's even a meticulous step-by-step -step video by Just Vlad that I'll link to down below. In the end, it should look something like this, and I really like how the extruder rides up and down with the hotted carriage, eliminating the need for a long Bowden tube. This is probably the best design that I've come across just shy of a direct extruder, and I'm glad to see it becoming the standard for Bowden-style machines. Anyhow, on to the project. Right away, it is based on the W3 2141 3-inch driver from Tangband. So if you're looking to pick a few of these up, you may want to do that soon. Seems like whichever speaker I choose for these projects ends up going out of stock just days after I release the video. So links down below and best of luck to all. The enclosure itself is a low diffraction micro bookshelf design. Acoustically, it is a bass reflex with a folded waveguide tuned for the flattest possible response, minimal group delay, and as deep an extension as I could manage out of something this small without resorting to passive radiators. The model fits on a 200 by 200 mm build plate, and it comes together in two parts by way of the tongue and groove joint. As an aesthetic choice, I've also modeled some accent panels for additional flexibility when matching it to an existing decor. And for the purpose of this review, I'll be printing a pair of these to run in stereo. As you'd expect, at this price point, the machine relies on manual bed leveling, but the interface makes the process fairly simple. The included micro SD card contain a few pre-sliced models, including the 3D Benchy, which, for my non-3D printing audience, is a popular benchmark for testing the printer's ability to form bridges, overhangs, and various other challenging features. So I loaded a spool of silver PLA from Mica 3D and let the printer do its thing. A short while later, we have a silver Benchy, and while I see a couple of minor flaws, for a machine of this caliber, it is downright impressive. So now let's move on to our feature model, which I'll print with the silk white PLA from Sunlu. As per usual, 0.2mm layer height, 4 perimeters all the way around, and 20% rectilinear infill. Here, I should also point out that while my initial attempt at leveling the bed made for a great looking first layer, one of the edges ended up delaminating and ruining an otherwise great looking print. But after some trial and error, I figured out that to establish that first layer adhesion, I need to lay the lines down a little thicker. So I re-sliced the model with an initial height of 0.3mm and re-leveled the bed with a slightly tighter gap between the build plate and the nozzle. So that's a do-over and now we're looking good. Thankfully I bought plenty of this filament and it really does look very nice, especially when the light catches the curves. As you can see, the bed is held in place with a set of four binder clips, which may seem a little improvised, but they do get the job done so there's really no reason to over-engineer something only to raise the cost. And the fact that the build plate is removable makes it a lot easier to pry things off, especially as you don't have to worry about putting any strain on the Y-axis rollers. Here you'll definitely benefit from a sharpened blade, and getting it beneath the print is quite easy. I also enjoy the crackling sound as the print delaminates from the build plate. Have a listen. So that's two down and two more to go. And I'm happy to report that I haven't had to make any adjustments since the first successful print. Once I've dialed in the settings for the initial layer, all the subsequent prints came out pretty much the same. We're just about done with this pull, so I'll create a filament runout scenario to see how the printer handles it. And as you might expect, it comes to a halt, asks if you want to change the filament, and once the spool has been fed down to the hot end, it just picks up where it left off. 
So, with the enclosures finished, we can move on to the accent panels, which I'll print with this black PLA from GTEC. And once those are done, we can finally start putting things together. Right away, the inner terminals for the binding posts aren't going to be anywhere near as accessible later on, so this is a good time to prep our leads and wire everything in. By the way, if you want to pick some of these up, I'll post links down below to all the little bits and pieces you see me using here. Next, it's time to bond the two halves, and this is where Sophie likes to help out mixing the JB Weld and lining the groove with an even spread. Once the clamps go on, things are left to cure for about 12 hours, then we add the accent panels, followed by another 12 hours. Afterwards, the enclosure is ready to be loaded with a driver. The most important step here is to line the mounting ring with some type of a sealant, and as you've probably already gathered, I'm quite partial to blue tack. So, once everything's in place, we can perform some response analysis. And we'll drive things with this little Class T digital amp from Dayton Audio. Now then, about my speaker placement. I tend to get a lot of comments about the fact that I test my speakers near solid boundaries, walls, corners, what have you. And there's a very simple reason for that. It's what they're designed for. Bookshelf speakers, for instance, generally go on bookshelves or other acoustically similar areas of the room, and that's how I model them. Likewise, when I design an enclosure for a vehicle, I model the vehicle as part of the acoustic scenario, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to test it anyplace else. Anyhow, now that everything's wired up, let's see some data. There it is. And of course the underlying point here is that if you account for the circumstances native to your listening space, your models will be a lot better at predicting the end result. So now let's give these a listen, and I'll capture the sound with my stereo field recorder for those of you listening on speakers, and the mini DSP ears for those listening on headphones. And I'm also going to play the music directly from SoundCloud so that you can easily reference the source. Here we go. Thank you. 
All right, final thoughts. I do like this printer and 200 bucks really isn't asking much given what it does and how well it does it. They could have done something a little more elegant with this ribbon cable and perhaps a top support for the lead screw, but these are all problems you can print your way out of. I don't mind the glass build plate and the fact that it's removable makes it easy to replace with spring steel, which is something that I plan to do. All in all, this is an excellent entry point into 3D printing and I'll post links down below to this exact model, all the filament that I used throughout the project and of course the project itself which I made available on my Thingiverse account. So chime in with your thoughts, be sure to rate the video accordingly, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!